Disclaimer. This video is intended for an audience of 13 plus years old. Parental supervision is advised. And the masters of the universe. Hey guys, it's Matt coming back at you with another action figure custom diorama. This one is for my Filmation He-Man figure collection. I thought it was a good opportunity to kind of show it off, how to sculpt into foam and paint it. I thought it'd be a nice, easy kind of how-to, uh, if you will. I hear you guys can see these are jewelry boxes turned upside down. I just cut up some jewelry boxes in the shape of rocks, glued them on top of the jewelry boxes, and then painted them, which worked great at the beginning, but now it's taking up a lot of space on the shelf. So I'm moving over to foam. It allows me to use a couple of different tiers and save a lot of space. Hope you guys enjoy this and get something useful out of it. Merman. It's Dolph Lundgren. Uh, okay, so as always, I start out by measuring the tallest figure that I want on the tier. In this case, it's God Skeletor. So I definitely want him to fit on the tier, so I'm measuring to see how high up his helmet is reaching to the ceiling. This is going to tell me how high to, or how big I should cut the foam. And here's a styrofoam I use. I get this from Home Depot. It costs like $6, I want to say. Maybe it's like $6.50, something like that. Very awesome. Awesome to work with. Love this material. I used to be really intimidated working with foam. I used to do my dioramas in cardboard, but since I found this stuff, I am loving it. Highly recommended. Okay, so I definitely want it to be straight. If you guys don't have a ruler, um, I highly recommend getting this one. You can get it in any art store. Not sure the name of the ruler. As an artist, I should probably know that. But, yeah, it's my T-ruler. I just call it a T-ruler. For all I know, that's what it's called. I measured out the foam. Here I'm starting to cut with a X-Acto knife, which is very sharp. And then I also use industrial uh, razor blades. Helps me get really straight. Just take your time with it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, any mistakes you guys make, you can always sand it down later. But it helps cut down with the work later. So just try and be as straight as possible. Here you can see I'm going over it with the box cutter. Trying to get in there deep. Oh, careful. I'm always nervous doing this. I mean, you want to be as perfect. Yes, I'm a perfectionist. I'm an artist, so that's sort of my problem. Just making myself a little line here because I'm going to turn the board around and do it again. I'm not really sure how foam cutters work. Like, I, I've seen people using a wire or anything. Like, as far as I know, you need a table to set that up. I don't have a workshop or anything like that. You guys can cl so clearly see I'm, I'm in the living room at this point on the floor. Rita's asleep. She doesn't care. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I get a good cut here. You can see it's not perfect. There are ridges. But... We're going to sand that down. The shelf is actually 30 inches across, and this board is not. So I'm anytime I do these displays, I'm typically having to cut out an extra piece. That's why this there's a piece of styrofoam here on the floor that very odds and ends cut out of it. I like utilizing as much as I can to save money. So cut out the extra piece. And when we glue these together, then we'll have 30 inches across on the shelf. So that's good. You guys can see I'm just making sure it fits here. Don't worry about that gap. We can fill that in with epoxy sculpt later. 
smooth it out. Alright, we're back at the table. You guys can see, anytime I do sculpting on the foam, I tend to use two different pencils. These pencils, one with a dull tip and what's called a, uh, a mechanical pencil for getting really in there, doing sharp, sharp cuts, deep cuts. Razor blade doesn't really help you there because it's going to make really, really straight lines, but you can control a, a pencil. Oh, and here you guys can see the most fun part of the project which is basically just drawing your design onto the styrofoam. This part's a lot of fun, it's very relaxing. I recommend putting on some good music. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always put on the Alien soundtrack more often than not, Alien Isolation soundtrack, I guess I should specify. Blade Runner 2049 is another good one. I'm connecting it through here. You can see I put the pieces together to help me figure out where the cracks are. Don't forget the top of the board. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. Depends on whether or not you yourself know is that standing portion that they're going to be on, is it going to be visible? In this case I chose to do it. You can see the, the close-up and the ridges. Now I'm going to start going deeper. You guys can see I, I laid out my outline. I liked it. And now I'm going to start going over the same design. Once you guys like the design, go over it deeper with the dull pencil. Well, I like the dull pencil. You guys can make it as deep as you want. I want different layers to the cracks. You guys can see there's two little insertion cracks up there. I love adding that. We're going to go even deeper than this, but I just wanted to show off this technique. That's how you get that. I could have sanded down these, the front portion too, to make it a little bit more rounder, a little bit more rock-like, but I don't know. I was, I kind of like the look of this. I, I was okay with it. Put a little bit of uh, glue on the back of this thing, but you can still see it's flimsy here. But you guys get the idea. Alright, so now we're going to apply the epoxy sculpt. This is the one I use. I'm going to put a link in the, the description where you can get it off of eBay. It's pretty cheap. I go with the $25. I feel like it's a pound that I get. I have a, a specific razor blade for picking them out. It's part A and part B. I like to, you can see part B is dark gray, so just mix it up until it becomes pure white, and then you're good to go. Good to start sculpting. This stuff isn't going to start drying for at least like an hour and a half, I want to say. It really starts hardening after like an hour, but you can still work it if you know what you're doing well into an hour and a half. You know, just fill in those cracks. A lot of people don't know about this trick. It's helpful to know that you can use epoxy sculpt on the foam projects. You might end up making a mistake a week into your project and you might think it's ruined so instead of destroying or throwing out the whole entire thing and starting over again might be worth taking a little epoxy sculpt and adding it in there and seeing if you can fix it. Alright so now I applied some water to my fingertip and once you do that you can really start to smooth this stuff out. So I'm just leveling it out. You can see that there's water there. Getting in all those cracks smoothing it out, trying to make it as best as I can look like one piece. Just taking my time with it, working it over. Don't forget the top. It's a little time consuming, but Honestly, this whole process should take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. 
You can see it's looking really smooth. Once that's painted up, you're not going to be able to tell. The only way you can tell is by these cracks, which kind of stop. So that's, again, I'm going to go back. It's still wet, and I'm using the pencil to finish the cracks through. Hopefully, after this is all done, I'm really not going to be able to tell that there was ever really a crack there. I love doing these projects. It's really relaxing. Any rough ridges that are left over that might come across as, hey, this looks different, you know. It, I'm just blending it in with a wet paintbrush. A lot of people don't know about this trick. I highly recommend it. Just get in there, and I just leave it wet. I don't even dry it. Just let it air dry. Here you can see the uh, mechanical pencil. It's really making some nice ridges in there. Maybe there's some water damage on Eternia millions of years old so we got some nice ridges and then we got even deeper cracks maybe the water got in there and i always like thinking about the logistics of my project like why why are there deeper cracks oh this is a good tip styrofoam is pretty sensitive so i want these ridges that would take hours if not days to do just roll up some foil and go about pressing it on top of the foam like so i'm not doing it hard um medium strength but if you want deeper ridges just do it do it even harder apply more pressure but you can see what it does i wanted it to be very subtle this is green paint from five and below I got like 10 paints for 5 bucks, but I really liked it. It's great for doing displays. It's cheap paint. And you can see it's so cheap it doesn't even really cover the, uh, the pink, but that's okay because we're going to layer it up and layer it up and layer it up. And the idea is to get a couple of different greens going. That would be nearly impossible. I'm, uh, you can already see it's this is from layers I think I did four layers so not that much work but you can see how cheap the paint is it doesn't really cover the epoxy sculpt but so this is after two coats and already you can see there's a couple of different greens on the screen which I love can't really get that effect and then this is the what 94 cents green that I purchased from Walmart. I love Walmart. Perfect place to buy paints. If you go on eBay, it's like six dollars per paint, but well, same paint on, in Walmart, ninety-four cents. You can see just adding a little bit of green here. Dry brushing, heavy dry brushing, gets you this effect. And I really want a couple of different greens. That's that's what I'm going for. I, you know, like as an artist, I just I hate when things are one color. If you get a couple of different colors going on, then it really makes your project pop out. This is the second most fun part of the project, painting. I love to draw, so Painting is always going to be number two. And just take your time with it. Have fun with it. Also, you can't really screw this up. I mean, if, if, if you make a mistake, just paint over it and start over again. You're not trapped or regulated when it comes to art. I'm doing a really light coat in certain areas. You can see I'm doing heavier whites than others really trying to get like a marbling effect got a little indecisive there for a second 
try my best to get close-ups of this stuff for you guys, but you can see all the little ridges that we did with the foam is really starting to come out and pop. Then I thought at the top where they were standing, maybe there's maybe there's water damage. Maybe water always comes down there. So, so I thought this would look kind of cool. Just highlighting that crack. So maybe any water that falls gets into these cracks, and that's what I'm thinking with when I'm doing this dry brush right here. See so some water streaks. This is only one tier we're working on, but uh, I left the option open. I might end up doing a second tier later. Look at that. Look at all these ridges. All from the foam. See, when you bend it in the light, you can really see it, and in person it really stands out. So I really like this. So then I added some white to it to give it more of a neon look. You see I'm just working it. Don't forget the top where they'll be standing. I apologize, you can't really see from this angle. It's the hardest thing in the world to do is while you're filming. I swear, half my projects would be done in less than a week, but because I filmed, it's much longer. So then I added one more layer, even more white, added to the green. That's what you guys are seeing here. Maybe there was a battle on the wall. Maybe we had vehicles over here throwing catapults or something, I don't know. So then obviously get some Elmer's glue and I made the decision on this day. I was walking through Walmart, I was doing some hunting and lo and behold I found some moss. And I want to say I paid four bucks for this. I had worked with it before on my Doctor Doom tower. So this is the second time I'm working with moss, but I really liked it, so spur of the moment decided I was going to add some moss here. So I'm just gluing it down, but this stuff is really unruly. I've, I was really surprised. I don't remember it being this unruly, so I had to get these tips going and then put some glue on the bottom as you can see what I'm doing there just to kind of get it to do what I wanted it to do. I wasn't too happy with the overall green, so you will see that I, I ended up highlighting it and painting some green in the moss. Just another thing though that I can that uh, another detail that gets overlooked a lot, but can really put your your display over the top. Here's the final part. You can see some darker greens in there. At the top of the screen, there's a, a really deep gash in that rock. I thought this was perfect. And this is really, really quick. Anybody can do this. You don't have to be a master artist. You don't have to pay someone $150 to do this. You can do this yourself at home. You guys can do it. Here's the final, one of the final shots. You can see it under the light. For $6 plus, what, a few bucks for paint, another few bucks for the moss. With tools in your house right now, you guys can do this and save space on the shelf. We can always add another tier to this later if we expand the collection even more. 
I'm going to show you the, the final display so you can see how much it opened up. And there's Scott Skeletor. He does fit on the shelf. I love this collection of figures. The, the, the colors on the Filmation figures just... I love these guys, the turtles. You can see it really opened up. It's going to open up even more as I get Panthor. I'm going to customize a Swiftwind for Shira. There's custom Conan and Stinkor and Relay. This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got something useful out of it. Please like and subscribe. Leave any questions in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.